Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to replace a fuel pump in your car or truck. In this case, we'll be working on a 1998 Mustang GT, Project Crowd Control, the Drift Sting, but this process applies to most makes and models on the road that have a fuel pump in the gas tank. So after you watch this video, you'll be able to change the fuel pump on your vehicle. Now, if you remember from the last episode, I had a dead battery, so I replaced the battery with a brand new one. So now we have complete power to the vehicle. Before we go and change out the fuel pump, there's a few things I want to check, and I want to show you how to check, just in case it isn't the fuel pump that's actually bad, and it's something a lot easier to fix. So the first thing I do is grab the key, and you're going to want to put it in the ignition and turn it to the run position. When you turn it to the run position, listen for a hum or a whine from the fuel pump in the rear of the car. Just to give you an idea, we're in my Corvette, ready, listen to the fuel pump prime. So you could hear that fuel pump run for about two to three seconds. And it runs like that so we could build up fuel pressure and start the car. But in the case of the Mustang, when we turn it to the run position, we don't hear that fuel pump prime. But that doesn't mean the fuel pump is bad. It could be something simple as a fuse that you just need to check and replace. So grab your owner's manual and flip through it until you get to the page about fuses. And you can see right there it says fuel pump. On our Mustang, the fuse box is located in the engine bay right behind the battery. And according to our diagram, the fuse should be right there. So we'll remove the fuse. And you can see there's no break in the connection, so our fuse is good. So grab a multimeter, then stick one prong into one side of the fuse holder and another prong into the other side. And you can see we have just about 12 volts going through this circuit. So that means we're getting power to at least the fuse box. Now let's check to see if we're getting power to the back of the car where the fuel pump is. And that's right down here by the gas tank. And if we're looking up, there's a wiring harness right here, and this runs to the fuel pump. So this is where the fuel pump is getting its power. Now disconnect the wires by pressing down the little tab and pulling them apart. Since the pump only gets power with the car in the run position, turn the key to the run position. Now grab the black lead and ground it. I'm going to ground it to the exhaust, but any bare metal part will act as a ground. Now grab your red lead, and we're going to check each of the prongs in this connector to see if there's voltage. And right away we have 12 volts. So just check the others real quick, and the others are getting power as well, so it's safe to say that we're getting power to the fuel pump. Now I'm going to leave these wires disconnected because we're going to be dropping the fuel tank. But let's just say we didn't get any power to these wires. The next thing to check is something called the inertia switch, and it's usually located in the trunk. In this case on the Mustang, it's right back here. This right here is the inertia switch, and the red button on the top should be pressed all the way in. To test this, all you do is you get something and you hit it. And this should pop up. And then you should be able to press the button down, It'll click and it'll reset. This switch is designed to cut the power to the fuel pump in case there's an accident. But sometimes it could get triggered just from hitting a pothole or maybe you have some junk in the trunk that just hits it. So if you're not getting any voltage to the pump, real quick, check the inertia switch because that might be the easy solution to your problem. You also might have noticed that the interior pieces of my car are in the trunk. And the reason why is because on the passenger side, right over here in the footwell, is the location of the fuel pump relay. So this has to click on when you turn the key to the run position. And if it doesn't click on, you won't get any power to the fuel pump. And you can hear when I turn the key to the run position, there's a couple of clicks. And one of those clicks is the fuel pump relay. But if you don't hear the relay click on, then it's a good idea to swap out the relay. They're cheap enough and it might fix the problem. In this case, I'm guessing the previous owner couldn't figure out the problem. Which is probably why he donated the car to charity. But now I have the car, so Mr. Owner, if you're watching, at the end of this video, we will get this car running. Now just to be thorough, there's one more thing we could check and that's using a fuel pressure tester gauge. Right down here at the fuel rail you just take off this Schrader valve cap and you screw on the gauge. And with our gauge connected, this will give us the exact fuel pressure when we turn the key on. We should see it jump up to at least 30 psi, maybe higher, and it should stay there. So with the key in the run position, we turn it on and the fuel pressure doesn't even budge. So now we know for sure that there's no fuel pressure at all, the pump isn't running, but it's getting voltage. And then you might say, hey, what if the fuel filter's clogged? Well, if the fuel filter's clogged, you'll see that pressure rise slowly or rise just a little bit. In this case, we have nothing at all. And from all this testing, we know we need a new fuel pump, which is easy to replace with common hand tools. And when you're replacing a fuel pump, you also want to replace the fuel filter so that the new pump could run efficiently. And thanks a lot to AutoZone for providing me with a fuel pump so I could get my car running. Now let's get started. First, grab your safety goggles since we're working with fuel. 
Next thing we want to do is remove the negative battery terminals so we don't have any power to the car. That way if we ground something out by mistake it won't spark and ignite the fuel. With the negative terminal disconnected, in the back of the car, I have the rear end lifted up safely, and I also have a fire extinguisher on hand since we're working with gasoline. Do a little bit of research because with your specific car, you might be able to go in the trunk and lift up the carpeting and get access to the top of the fuel tank. In this case, there's nothing under here except a spare, and there's no access. But in many cars, there's access here or in the rear seats. So just check that before you go and drop the fuel tank. Even if you have to drop the fuel tank, don't be intimidated because it's very easy to do. The first thing you need to do is go to the fuel filler door. You saw me do this in the last episode, but be sure to remove as much gas from the tank as you can to make the tank as light as possible. Next, remove the three screws holding in the filler neck so when the tank drops down, this will drop down with it. Basically, we want to remove anything that might get hung up as we drop the tank. Now that this is loose, let's slide under the car and disconnect the fuel lines over by the fuel filter so we could drop the tank. So right here we have two fuel lines going into the tank that are not going to move when we drop the tank. So we need to make sure we disconnect them. And right up here is our fuel filter, which we're going to disconnect as well. So now we want to remove our fuel filter and there's a connector there and a connector there. But first we need to pop this off. Now this right here is a quick disconnect. So we need these special tools that slide over the fuel line and then you push it in towards the quick disconnect and that'll pop the hose off. Also be sure to have some paper towels ready. And I like to use the cap that came with the new fuel filter so that I don't get gas leaking all over me as I disconnect the other side. And the other side's the exact same process. Good, with the fuel filter removed, we have this fuel line right here that we're gonna disconnect in a couple of seconds as we drop the tank down. Now with our fuel lines disconnected and our old fuel filter removed and the filler neck unscrewed, we could go and drop the tank. So grab your jack, place it in the middle of the gas tank to try to evenly balance it, and lightly press up against the gas tank so when we remove the straps holding the tank in, the tank won't just fall. And with our tank supported, this is really easy to undo. There's a strap right here and a strap right there. At the end of each strap is a bolt. We'll remove them one at a time, and that's one. Now that we have this removed, we have to go to the other side, and then the bolt is actually on the other side underneath the car. I love how nothing is rusty under this car. It makes everything so easy to remove. And now we can use the jack to slowly lower the tank. With the gas tank halfway down, I want to block it off so we can remove that last fuel line. At the top of the tank, we have two fuel lines. And we only need to remove the one that we didn't remove before. Now with all our hoses disconnected right over here, our filler tube's getting hung up a little bit. There's a rubber boot right up there, which is holding it. I don't want to rip the boot. So instead of dropping this straight down, we're going to drop it down at an angle. And then make sure as the tank drops, it isn't hanging by anything. Good. And that gives us plenty of room to get to our fuel pump, which is located right down in here. Now we're going to have to remove all six bolts holding this cap on the gas tank. But before we do that, we have to remove this wire from the sensor back there. And you just pull the pigtail right off the sensor. So now our entire wiring harness is loose. And now we can remove these six bolts holding the fuel pump assembly in. All right, our last bolt is out. Now we can pop the lid off, and just be careful because you don't want to break any of these hoses. Now if we look into the fuel tank, you can see the fuel pump assembly. There is a clip on either side that you need to push in with your fingers. You can see there's one there and one there. Push those inwards and pull the assembly out. So now we can wiggle it the rest of the way out. Be careful with the float because you don't want to bend it because then your gas gauge won't be accurate. Now this whole thing here is the fuel pump assembly. It has the float on it so that you know how much gas is in your tank. It has the fuel sock and all the wires attached to it. Now there's two options. You could get rid of this old fuel pump assembly and replace it with a nice new fuel pump assembly. And then this just drops in the tank and you're good to go. Or you could get a new fuel pump since this is the only thing that's bad in this assembly and replace it out. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's get the old fuel pump out of our assembly. And you can see the old fuel pump is right here. So disconnect the wiring harness to the old fuel pump. And then on the top of our assembly here, there's a couple of bolts. They're five millimeter. First, remove these two, which hold the pump in. And once the two screws are removed, this should come right off like so. And now in order to get the fuel pump removed, we need to remove these three bolts out here. And with the three screws removed, we could remove the lid. And then now our fuel pump should come right out, just like that. Next, very simple, make our new fuel pump look like our old fuel pump. So put the rubber piece on the top like that, as well as the rubber piece on the bottom. 
get our fuel sock and what this is it's like a pre-filter so any larger particles won't get sucked up through the fuel pump and cause damage and that is our fuel pump all ready to go in the other fuel sock goes on the actual bucket so just pull off the old fuel sock and we're gonna put in a nice new one and these things just push right on and click right in beautiful now drop the pump in the bucket put the lid on and screw it down these screws weren't tight so tighten them by hand only now we have our tube that connects to the fuel pump just goes right over it push it down and we'll tighten that down by hand with a new fuel pump it does come with a new wiring harness there's a large connector which only fits on this large connector and then there's a small connector which only fits on this small connector give them a little pull make sure they're good on there and then this connects into the stock harness good and that's it that's all it takes to replace the fuel pump Installation is the reverse procedure. Put the assembly in the tank, make sure it clicks in like that, plug our wire back into the sensor, and then we need to tighten all six of these screws down in a crisscross pattern. This has to be sealed good or you're gonna get a check engine light. Now we need to reconnect the fuel line and it just clicks into place and snap the lock into place as well. Now we can jack the tank up all the way and with our gas tank jacked up, let's get our two bolts and tighten down the straps to hold the gas tank in. And the strategy here is to press upwards as you screw the bolt in. And this gets tightened to 38 foot-pounds of torque. And now we repeat the same exact process for the other tank strap. With the fuel tank strapped in and torqued down, let's remove the jack. Now we could slide back under the car and install our fuel filter. I always write the mileage on the filter and pay attention to the arrow on the filter which indicates the flow of fuel. Each fuel line is going to make a click when it's all the way in. Now all we need to do is push the locking tabs in. Alright, now everything is attached. We could test out our fuel pump. Normally, you want to test things out as you go, so you don't have to take it all apart if it doesn't work. That being said, let's just get this fuel nozzle screwed down to complete the job. This is getting exciting. Tighten these screws down so they're snug. Alright, fuel pump replacement complete. Will the Mustang now start? That is the question we've all been waiting for. Was the fuel pump the culprit? Was it what's causing the problem with this car? Is that why the guy donated the car? And is that why I won it for $1,100 on an auction site? Let's connect the negative terminal and find out. Man, oh man, am I excited. I cannot wait to see if this baby starts up. Pretty confident in our diagnosis. Pretty sure it's the fuel pump. We're about to find out. So when you change out a fuel pump, what you wanna do is you wanna turn it to the run position, shut it off. Turn it to the run position, shut it off. One more time. And what that does, that pressurizes the fuel. And it's just filling the fuel lines with gas because you emptied them when you replaced the fuel pump. So, clutch down. In neutral, here goes, moment of truth. Will Project Crowd Control start up? The drift sting. All right, she's alive. This is great. Oh man, that's exciting. Okay, no warning lights. We got fuel pressure, good battery. Good, good, good. And does that engine sound good or what? So we're at 30 PSI fuel pressure, which is perfect. This engine's just purring. That is exciting. So we got the car started, the fuel pump was the culprit, and that is how you diagnose and replace a fuel pump in your car or truck. Project Crowd Control is now alive. We are gonna do some awesome stuff to this car. Hopefully this video is helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Now, how did that sound? That sounded awesome. But you hear this? That doesn't sound good. Luckily, looking underneath the car, it's just this heat shield that's making noise. It got me a little bit nervous. I thought it was the engine, but we are good. Another thing you want to do right away is make sure there's no fuel leaks anywhere, since we did disconnect those quick disconnects, so you don't want to see any dripping fuel. And also check this when you go fill up the tank. But this all looks good.